on. Hey, everybody. We are live. I'm here at East Coast USA Surf, Kayak, and Wave Ski with Nathan Eads. Man, thank you for joining me. This is like, this is an honor. So right now in life, um, tell me where you're at and, and what you're doing. Uh, you're in um, Peru, right? Yeah, I'm down, in, I'm down in Peru. Richie, thanks very much, Paul, for inviting me. I'm uh, humbled to be uh, to be invited uh, to talk on, on this. You, you're doing great things for the sport, and it's thanks to people like you um, that the sport grows because you're basically giving up your free time to to promote and push our sport. And it's a sport that I've, uh, I've, I've pursued for a long time. I've got a lot of passion for. So to see somebody like yourself um, turning up relatively new on the scene, pushing and promoting the sport is absolutely fantastic. So thanks to you, first, firstly. Um, yeah, I'm, da I'm actually a high school teacher, so I'm down in, in, in Lima, Peru. I've been down here for 12 years. Um, wow. In July, I would have been here for 12 and a half years. Um, and it was sort of luck and coincidence, really. Uh, two things sort of uh, aligning at the same time. Um, which which got me here. Uh, I'm very passionate about my sport, but I'm also very passionate about design and mm. passionate about teaching. So um, I luckily managed to find a school which is positioned uh, in in one of the best uh, places in the world for surf, Peru. Um, it's an excellent school and uh, it's got a great design department. So I've just managed to. It's not always in life where you manage to align your sort of work yeah. life balance and. And everything is just fantastic, and that's sort of what I what I found here in Lima. Um, so it's it's a lot of luck. Uh, you know, I benefited from a lot of uh, good luck, uh, which basically grew from from early opportunities as a, as a child, which my parents sort of afforded me. They were they are um, kayak still at seventy two and seventy three, so they're still kayaking. They're kayaking uh, maniacs, as is my brother, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I got it. Got into kayaking and sort of, uh, and went from there really. So uh, yeah, it's been great. Yeah, I mean, you're in one of the best surf spots in the world. Uh, I, you know, I, what can I say? You got Chikama down there, and 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 I'm sure you know tons of breaks that uh, don't really get the you know the notoriety that Chikama and some other places do. So wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. We're, we're lucky, and over the over twelve years, I've managed to find some of those lesser known spots where you know really it's it's crazy that that you can still find spots that are considered secret spots, and you can be sitting in a lineup with four other people um, and surf for three hours, you know, with four people on a on a point break that breaks you know up to a kilometer. So yeah, yeah. Ch Ch Chikam's got the fame, and it's sort of the honey pot. I heard it being described as the other day, which, which is spot on, really. It, it attracts everybody from all over the world. And then you can just be sort of an hour south or an hour north and mm. be sat on another point break equally as good and sometimes better, mm. uh, bigger and stronger. Mm. Um, and, and because it hasn't got the name of Jakarta, it's, you know, you sat there all by yourself surfing. So, yeah, it's fantastic. It's kind of hard to hear, um, <laughs> but I'm happy for you. <laughs> it's hard to hear. It's hard, right. It's difficult for you to hear. I thought you it's meant difficult to for me to, yeah, to wrap my yeah. head around it. I mean, I can't say I'm jealous. I'm happy for you. Um, I just wish something like that for myself. And, and, you know, I can make it happen, obviously. But for you guys that are listening, um, you know, Nathan's got a treat for us because he's got a whole presentation uh, planned. But before uh, I, I turn it over to him, um, you know, I, my wife bought me, uh, I think it was two Christmases ago, uh, on Amazon, uh, this DVD and you can see it on my screen called interference. Uh, and, uh, it came at the perfect time, man. Let me tell you, COVID was happening and I was just really getting into the sport and, uh, I watched this thing and you know what it was? My brother and I, this is what we used to do, um, in, in the 80s. I'm 50. So, you know, we were always watching VHS tapes from the surf shop when we were kids and surf movies, especially when it was flat, you know, <laughs> or at night. So I basically did this uh, for months on end, which was constantly I had interference in the DVD player. And uh, what's interesting is you were in a surf kayak. You weren't in a wave ski in this movie. And Joey Hall put this together. So God bless him, man, because he told me this was like two two years of work and passion and putting this movie together. So you were in a surf kayak in that movie. I mean, now you're now you're wave ski. 
Yeah, well, that's where it all began, really. It began in, 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 in surf kayaking. Look, I got, I'll start uh, rattling through the slides. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, to, and we'll, we'll talk about um, interference a little bit later on. But yeah, big, yeah. big shout out to Joey Hall, who hopefully has, 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 um, Love it. has tuned in. Um, this was before, this was the analog days. This was before digital yeah. um, video, you know, video. Um, 2008, right? 2007, yeah. 2000. Yeah, exactly. Ages, ages ago, and uh, Joey turned up in uh, well, in Spain, and and then eventually Morocco with all of this, uh, all Great. of these tapes, you know. And, and he he then went back to the states with, all, with a huge amount of editing. And editing software back then wasn't as as easy to use uh, or mm -hmm. in, or as, as intuitive as it is these days. Um, and I learned to edit over the over the pandemic. It was dead easy. Uh, because it is just so easy and intuitive these days, but he had to yeah. basically, you know, churn through all this footage and put this video together, and it was it was fantastic. And it's thanks to people like Joey um, that the sport really got a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of attention and exposure. Because now it's now it's a lot easier. We've got social media, but um, but yeah, people people like yourself, people like Joey, Spencer Kirk, who just who are, who, who are and were out there just pushing and promoting the sport, you know, for no financial gain other than just to. Um, just for the love of the sport, which is which is amazing, um, and it's yeah. you know, Karkin's taken us on that journey. So yeah, this is where it all started. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm the one great. without the helmet, sat there. Um, my brother and I were brought up by. Like, my, this is a bit unfair, really, on my mum because all my mum's taking the photo. She's there in the action as well. Um, <laughs> so it wasn't just it wasn't just a father leading it, uh, leading us. It was it was mother and father combo, and uh, they would take us on these. These kayaking trips with the sort of a Canadian canoe there would be the, the support vehicle. Um, and when we would get tired, they'd just strap the kayaks on the back and throw us in the, in the Canadian and, and take us down. And this is in the south of France. And they yeah. took us on, on multi day trips at, the, at that, that young age and uh, really kind of um, sort of uh, grew that passion from a young age. Um, and then later we, you know, as we grew up, this, in this photo, I think I'm about um, 12 there. Mm -hmm. uh, we went out to the French Alps and we started doing more and more white water. And we had our own kayaks uh, all through our lives, really. And it was always river kayaking. But I always had this sort of itch, which was surfing. So uh, the year that we went to the French Alps to, to, to go kayaking on a number of river, rivers, but one of the rivers was called the Durance and any Anyone from Europe listening will know about the Rabbit's Wave. It's a, it's a fantastic wave to go and surf on, on mm. in kayaks. Um, the, these were the days of the sort of the little pop outs and when people would go and they just throw the nose of the kayak in the river and do a big sort of pop out and hold their paddle up like that. Um, <laughs> and I would, I would finish a day's kayaking and sort of throw my kayak in the corner, pick, pick up a bodyboard and go and ride the wave. So mm. um, much of my parents sort of dismay. They would say, well, why, why don't you take your kayak in there? I had this kind of chip. It was a bit different to the rest of my, my family. So from that young age, I was always curious um, about about surf. And so that was already starting to happen as we were on these, these river kayaking trips. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, you know, we, we kept we kept kayaking as a family. We'd go up and camp the vans and uh, go all over Europe kayaking. It was, it was brilliant. I think I'm about 14 at this age here in the, these photos. And mm -hmm. um, and perhaps this, this photo on the left-hand side, um, it gives a little bit of a, a, a backstory there of, of, of the kayak in the background just behind my mother is, is a, a surfer mark too. So although we were we were taught to kayak on rivers and it was all about the rivers, um, in his mid-twenties, my father had one of these surfer mark twos, which is that kind of black kayak on the trailer in the background. So I think subconsciously he was always talking, you know, he was always talking about surfing in the background of these surfing Mark II's, which had sort of died out. And subconsciously it was just, it was just, you know, that was the, that was what I was hearing. It was just sinking into my head. So I was sort of destined, destined to surf really. And mm -hmm. on the top right hand side there, there's, that's me on a little wave ski, um, which weirdly enough, I didn't at that age, I was about eight or nine, I think, and I was too scared in the top right hand side. I was too scared to wear a spray deck. Um, and my family were in the in the in, in the in the surf, just in river kayaks, um, nothing sort of dynamic, and I was too scared to be in a in a kayak with a spray deck. So they they said, "Oh, sit on this, sit on top." We pulled it back then, but yeah, looking yeah. back, the, the way scheme perhaps died far earlier than I than I thought, or I give credit to. And then the bottom right hand side is is me at a, a famous Welsh um, river, uh, tidal wave, tidal 
earthquake. It's a, it's a sound actually between yeah, a, yeah. an island and the mainland. In uh, it's called the Ramsey Sound. It's in West Wales. And as the high tide comes, it sort of has this funnel effect, which creates this sound, forces the, the water through, and creates these river river waves. So yeah, um, yeah. I was out there in salt water. I think I was about eleven in that photo. Um, and by that point, I'd got over the, the, the fear of wearing a spray deck and uh, probably got a roll by then as well. Um, so, yeah, as well as river running, there was sort of bits of surfing that was creeping in. And this was me, I think, 15 at a local run just up the road from where I grew up in, in Wales. So um, kayaking on rivers was, was the thing we were doing. It was always the thing. But sort of yeah. um, on the sidelines, a bit of surfing was creeping in. And then... Eventually, I think I'm about 16, 17 <laughs> in this, this, this photo. Eventually, I, um, I discovered surf kayaking. Yeah. And at that point, sort of, it was, it was great. It was, it was cool. It was fast. It was um, everything I sort of wanted to get from surfing, uh, yeah. but in a kayak. Um, except that the kayaks then were, they weren't relying on fins. They were relying on this really, really long rail. And they're three and a half meters at that white kayak there's three and a half meters long and i arrived or i found surf kayaking at an amazing time because um that was the only kayak i had the white one of that length because the yeah. next kayak was on the right hand side is the revised uh ICI C stands for international class i think they're called long boats now yeah. and um as i got onto the scene they were just revising the size and, and i believe the rationale was that international um, uh, world events were suffering because people couldn't fly or it was very expensive to fly three and a half meter kayaks but by chopping the kayaks down to 2.9 meters meant that they could get into the, uh, the hold of the planes and so the rationale was let's shorten the kayaks so that people can get around to international international competitions and our sport will sort of grow and world championships will have better turnouts but actually what we found from Sean in the boat was, was things could get a lot more dynamic uh, yeah. quickly. Um, yeah, how many then, years ago was that? Uh, like this picture, were you there? What year was that? Uh, like I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm 2020. Do, you do the maths. I'm going to be 40 in October. And, <laughs> and in that, um, that photo on the right-hand side, I am uh, 17. I was in the first year of sixth form. That was at the World Championships. I came second. And the photo on the left-hand side there, I'm yeah, I'm 16, going 17, I guess. Um, so yeah, a long time ago, um, around about 2000, 99, 2000, yeah. around about then. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then things start getting really exciting. So you see now those three kayaks. You've got the Mega Air Force, the Mega UFO, two Mega UFOs. I'm in in the yellow and and blue um, Predator, mm. and <laughs> the UFO. I can't remember the name of the, the one in the middle. But that's sort of three generations or, or iterations of a short high performance surf kayak, which came out uh, about within about 24 months. So things within two years went really quickly. Yeah. Um, okay. Fins on the bottom, plane in hulls, and and you know, I'm not even 20 yet. I, I haven't been in the sport for three years, and the sport has just evolved. So I was lucky enough to be involved in in surf kayaking throughout a really exciting time where it went from these long three and a half meter boats into these these short uh, high performance things with fins on the bottom um and it looks like i'm on a river there i am i'm waiting for a bore wave in, in south wales we're lucky enough to have this bore wave at the seven ball <laughs> uh so that's a, a good friend uh, of mine in the middle phil carpenter who used to who was quite influential in my surf kayaking actually as a, as a, as a youngster and on the far right hand side, that's my father there. He was he was in loving the fact that, that surf kayaks had found fins. And while he refused to surf one of the three and a half meter boats, once once things started to change, he got himself that air force on the right hand side, which he still has actually and still surfs at uh, 72 years old. So uh, wow. yeah, yeah, exactly. So he was grateful for the evolution of surf kayaking because it meant that he could reconnect with it. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's 2001 then. Uh, so yeah, over over twenty years ago, long long time. Wow. Um, but at the, at the same time, then you know, I'm I'm growing up. I'm approaching sort of um, what was like two thousand one there, two thousand. I'm sort of 
jumping back and forth in years. It was, I was 17, my brother took, my older brother took me to the Zambezi. I was in between my A-levels. And, um, and it was a brilliant trip, you know, we, we, we did some, like really at the time, what felt like crazy white water, it was big, it was huge, it was scary. And I, I just followed my big brother down. Um, he was never that into surf kayaking, but he yeah. was into the big trips. And uh, we did a couple of tours of, of Africa. We went the following year, we went to the White Nile. Um, and we, we picked up some sponsorship from Nookie Kayak and Equipment and, um, and Perception Kayaks there. That's the Perception Amp. And then later on, uh, I paddled for Wave Sport. Um, and I was doing a lot of freestyle back then. And, and, and I, was, you know, I was loving the river still and, and, and finding all these adventures. But I found myself thinking, well, hold on. There's a model here, isn't there? You know, we can go away for three months to these to these third world or these developing countries on a, on a you know on a shoestring budget, um, and we can we can kayak this great white water. But what if we now take one of these short HP kayaks and do the same thing? Let's just go to some place where there's great waves for mm -hmm. three months, and let's just let's just go and surf, and let's take that 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 kind of river bum model. <laughs> to like to, to the to the to the to the beach yeah. um so that that's really what i did i just just thought let's give it a go um i didn't know at that point whether yeah how i'd be received in the lineup uh would there be hostility i'd, I'd, I'd built up um relationships and friendships since in, in south wales i traveled a little bit with competition and of course with competition you've got that comfort zone because you you know you, you you've got that pack mentality you know you all go to the competition yeah. you're all there together and yeah. um, sort of comfort in numbers uh, but turning up to line up some own would I be received uh, as, as as kindly and, and would I would I just simply get rejected would I invest all that cash time and and sort of emotional energy of kind of dreaming of that destination would I would I just lose that when I arrive and just get called out the water and sort of come home with the t my tail between my legs and. Um, mm -hmm. Trip by trip, I started to learn that, that no, that wasn't the case. Um, and I did a couple of trips to South Africa. South Africa was linked to the ZAM because I'd met some bodyboarders on the ZAM who turned out to be really good stand-up surfers. And they'd come out to the Zambezi or come up from South Africa um, to see, a, I think it was a, a sister or a brother who was a raft guide. And they mm. decided rather than go and rafting, um, they would jump on a couple of river boards, which turned out to be body boards. And uh, I got talking to them and they, you know, they were telling me all the great surf they had in South Africa. So um, I went down and did, did two trips to stay, stayed with them and, and surfed and had a great time. Um, and then Bill Matos, who's the guy in the front of that photo there, we're all on the boat, mm -hmm. um, rang me up. I, I started writing them for magazines because it, it wasn't about social media back then. Uh, social media didn't exist yet, actually, I think, yeah. in, in these photos. Um, so That's crazy. I mean, yes. it beautiful. It was, it was about magazines back then. You know, if you got yeah. the photos um, and you could pull together an article, um, you'd get the exposure and that itself would then um, sort of be rewarded in sponsorship. Um, so I'd get sort of free gear, free equipment or reduced gear, reduced equipment. And that would help me then budget and save for, for another trip. Um, and I was riding for Nuki and, and Bill Matos, um, who's the, 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 the founder and, and owner of Nuki, I think he sold it now actually. He rang me up and he said, look, we've got this trip to Tahiti. Do you want to come? Um, we're going to try and surf some, 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 some crazy big waves and, um, you know, and, and me, uh, and along the way, we'll, we'll try and surf some, you know, we'll, we'll just be on this Island on a boat, just, just surfing great waves. I said, yeah, definitely I'll be there. So, it, you know, there's that good luck again. And, and I just jumped to it. I was in the first year of university and, uh, yeah, we, we had a great time. And then the, 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 the spin off of that was then Bill put this book together and I, I managed to get on the front cover of that from one of the photos and then. Um, another one of the photos was used in in in, um, in an advert there on the, on the left hand side, and and I started to get sort of positive exposure from the surf, from the sport, and that was um, converting into sponsorship, and that was you know helping um, fund this model of mine, which was let's uh, you know let's travel the world and, and surf in as many places uh, as I can as I could. So I I finished university. I qualified as a teacher. Took a year teaching and um, decided that I'd take a, a four year sabbatical. And what, I, what I wanted to do with that was to get um, as high as I could at, at a world level in the sport. 
Um, as a junior, I finished uh, second in the world in, in Ender 18s. And I, I wanted to make a, a, um, a seniors final, an, ad, an adult, an, a men's final, and um, had been success in, and successful in that, um, mainly due, or, or I thought, down to the sort of the, the access to waves I had in South Wales, and also my, you know, my, my desire to, 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 to serve the globe. Um, the two two things combined, sort of my, my my desire to train and get to get as good as I could get, um, combined with this desire to, to to travel the world and explore different cultures along the way, um, meant that during these four years I went to Sri Lanka, uh, Morocco. We got to Morocco through Europe, um, so it was a van mission. Ecuador, Peru, Tonga, um, and just 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 had, had, had the time of my life really. As you know, Sri Lanka, I was the the only. Um, Sir Kayaka there. I didn't go with a group of Sir Kayaka. I went with a friend of mine on the bottom left and the side of the screen up George, who was um, a surfing friend of mine. We, we just turned up and got, got some got some fun waves there. And uh, then on the top right hand side, there was a uh, a bit of a community of surfers um, in Sri Lanka who, who sort of um, accepted me with open arms, really, and, and just thought it was great that someone was stupid enough to turn up with a kayak and to try and surf these shallow reefs and um yeah that's uh, one thing i, I want to ask you about um i i've been to the north shore of hawaii and uh, uh the razor sharp reef um <laughs> so now you're hanging upside down skirted into a, a kayak in tahiti uh, or some of these shallow breaks i mean it's pretty uh pretty risky I, i've seen the reef rash you know uh did you prepare did you scope it out or go snorkeling beforehand or you just hit it i figured that the more i see the more i'll be scared of and the more i'll sort of hesitate so i i wore a helmet the entire trip mm. and um this is sri lanka by the way and uh yeah i mean it was i got some great waves um i, I did touch the reef a couple of times sort of with yeah. a paddle with the kayak um I did hit the hit, hit my head once, um, yeah. not it's sort of like a glancing blow. It didn't didn't hit too hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wore a helmet the whole time, and uh, I, I was safe and didn't get any any major reef rash. I had a couple of little scrapes and things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think luck more than judgment. If I'm honest, <laughs> if I'm yeah, honest okay. with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is the thing with these these kayaks. You've got the fins on the bottom and. Um, because of that, I was able to start, you know, climbing and, and hitting the wave in places where I hadn't uh, been able to in the the, the IC kayaks and I start to really. Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. It's interesting of, you say that because uh, I watch a lot of documentaries. I was watching one on like Pipeline or something on YouTube, and uh, you know, there's always the first, like the first guy to really get vertical uh, on a surfboard. You know, I, it, it was like I don't know Derek Hind or Terry Richards or somebody you know, took it. And so, I mean, in your experience, the ICs uh, compared to the HPs with the little fins, are you saying you're able to kind of get a little more vertical faster in the pocket compared to the older way of, of kayaking? Definitely. Yeah. They gave us more grip that the design of the hull, this, this kayak actually, I mean, that was, I designed that kayak. Um, yeah. We sold a couple of them. It went, it went, it went really well in this wave. It was, it was short. Um, okay. So on a, so on a perfect steep wave, it, it, it it was it, it, it was quick to the plane, so it had good acceleration, and mm -hmm. the, the fins helped me, you know, drive up the face. But you know, I, I, I should say, you know, I wasn't I wasn't the first here. There was there's a good uh, group of guys uh, and, and ladies at, at around about that time who were all discovering um, surf kayaking and enjoying this development of surf kayaking um, at about the same time. And um, yeah, you know, I, I was. I've always sort of considered myself a, a free surfer, a soul surfer, yeah, um, and sort of a, a happy to be a bit of a loner at times in respect that, you know, if I want to go and do something, I'll, I'll go and do it and I'll invite people, you know, I would have liked to have had a crew of like four or five guys to go to Sri Lanka, but, you know, yeah. I, I asked around and when people sort of didn't take me up on it, I, I went anyway, you know, I was just, I just, <laughs> I just wanted to go. Um, yeah. And uh, the, the competition scene, I've, I've always sort of enjoyed, but I've never considered myself a, a you know, hardened competitor. Um, I've always just, just loved the, the, the freedom of, of surf travel. And uh, yeah, yeah these, these surf kayaks just opened the door to that, really. Yeah, interesting. Um, 
But but at the end of that Sri Lanka trip, I'd, I'd come back and I, and, I, and I felt like I was surfing well, you know. I was sort of hitting the lip and, 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 and starting to get every now and again, you know, an occasional aerial and, and, and starting to feel great, you know, in, in the kayak. And I went to a competition, I think, a couple of weeks after I got back from Sri Lanka. And it was in South. It was in Cornwall. The waves were great. But that kayak, you know, there that was, was short and steady, it just wasn't versatile. So it didn't have the versatility to surf, um, you know, windy or slightly slower waves and yeah, um, was holding me back, really. And, and I decided, okay. let's, let's go back to the drawing board. So that kayak there was seven foot two, quite short. Yeah. Um, and this one, we basically stretched it. Uh, we, we cut it about a, a foot in front of the, 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 the cockpit. And we just stretched it. We put uh, five inches on it. That one's seven foot seven. Um, similar sort of characteristics, um, and it and it worked. It worked really well. It, it was a lot more versatile, mm. um, and that's that's the kayak you see in the video um, in interference. Right. That was the that was the design. The fusion uh, yeah. seven 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 foot seven. Mm. Um, so there's the crew. That's Mark Holland from uh, from South Wales from Carmarthen. He, yeah. he, was well, we were about an hour away from each other growing up, so we would we would uh, we were part of the Welsh team, um, and we were part of the you know we, we would train together, practice together in South Wales, and we'd, we'd go on co go to contests together, the international international ones as well. We'd, we'd always fly out, we'd get dropped off in London by our, our parents or one of our parents, and would fly out to these contests, and uh, and we kept bumping into this character, Joey Hall. Uh, mm. He's in the middle, and uh, and the, the, our humour as, as as a couple of Welsh lads was we, we were just we were just ridiculous. We were just daft. We just we just do stupid, ridiculous things, um, childish things, really. Just you know, just go out to, to parties and just just, just mess around. Um, and Joey just you know just thought it was it was, just sort of thought it was funny and just 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 clicked with it really. And um, and he he. he um, Mark and I formed like a really good close uh, relationship, and um, eventually Joey, uh, Mark, and I had, had planned this trip. We, we, we bought this van. We were kitting this van out to drive from Wales all the way to Morocco and back. And, and that's when Joey said, "Hold on, guys, I'm coming with you. I'm going to fly over, and uh, I'm, I'm going to join you on that trip." And we said, "Great! Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, we got enough space for you. We got enough space for the for your equipment." Uh, but we've built the bed, and, and it's only big enough for two people. So the idea, <laughs> the idea behind the bed was that, uh, yeah, like Mark and I were at the top, top and tail. There were, yeah. All the kayaks were, would go underneath because we wanted the van when it was all closed up to just look like a worker's van rather than a camper van, so yeah. that we didn't have to pay for campsites, so that we could basically um, just pull up anywhere and park, and people would just think it's a it's a, it's a van parked there overnight. Um, so Joey, we managed to fit him in next to the kayaks underneath the, underneath the bed. So he, he spent most of the trip just just in his sleeping bag underneath the uh, <laughs> and, underneath the bed on a thermo rest. Um, yeah, that's amazing. So basically, it smelled like wet salt water and man ass. It was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. And worse still, um, as Mark and I would climb up into the bank. Obviously, we were in flip flops. We were, you know, we, we had our shoes were picking up sand and dirt and grit and whatever, you know. So as we jump up, Joey would, for some reason, always be in, in, in bed first. Um, and as we jump up, he yeah. would, he, you know, he would always complain, you know, that this sand or dust would fall in his eyes. He'd always like whine about it, you know, oh, you guys are going with your sand. <laughs> so what we, what, what we did, we, we took great pleasure in the fact that, you know, the sand was upsetting him so much. So we, we got ourselves one of those little plastic sandwich bags and went down to the beach and, and filled it with sand. And we actually had this little bag of sand up there. And, and every night we'd just sort of throw it down on top of him. And he would just think it was, it was um, like sand falling from stuff, like, you know, from the kayak sort of hung up in the roof or, or falling from the bed or falling from everywhere. And, and one day he found the, uh, he found the bag of sand and he went absolutely berserk um, in, in, you know, in, 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 in good, good Joey fashion. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a, always memorable. And I, ever I see that photo of Joey there, I always remember that little bag of sand we used to just uh, wind him up with. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was, it was, you know, it was about, it was about, uh, 
fun and, and, and hanging out with, you know, your best mates and traveling down and surfing the best waves, you know, you could find. But it's also about culture. And sort of from a young age, we were, we were discovering different cultures and being exposed mm-hmm. to different cultures. Yeah. We weren't really prepared to meet these different cultures, um, you know, and, and, and admittedly hadn't done much research. And, and we're just learning as we went, really. And, and um, sort of as an adult now, working in a, in a different country with a different culture, I, I found that I worked uh, that culture out a lot quicker uh, in Peru than, than, than others because of all of these these journeys and these adventures which we've been having at a, at a young age. Um, and the school I work in now is uh, 40% international and, and, and 60% local colleagues. So it's a cross-cultural um, staff body and it's, you know, it's really important. I'm one of the um, managers of the school, so it's, it's important to understand uh, those cultures uh, and the differences in the cultures to help people work together. And, you know, I firmly believe that these uh, these adventures I went on as a kid, you know, set me up um, the future for, for, for life, you know. And, and, and a lot of people say, you know, people should go on gap years and, and, and sort of explore and see the world. And uh, and, I, and I agree. I think, I think they should. And people shouldn't be in too much of a hurry to get um, to get their degrees done, get into their, their careers. Um, too soon, I think take the time, figure yourself out, figure figure the world out a little bit, and then uh, all of that time isn't just drifting. Actually, it's looking back. It was time well invested because it, it helps you. It's all life skills, um, yeah. uh, relationship skills, and it, it, it's it, it, it's certainly, I feel personally, it's helped me a lot in my professional life. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the surf was, was, was surf the number great. one. Yeah. We are loving it, you know. This is uh, so. This is the Fusion Seven Seven Kayak, um, and this was so. This is Morocco. We we found some some fairly big days out there. It was it was wow. a lot of fun. Um, Insane. And and this shot, I love this shot. I, I got lucky with this shot. This isn't actually Morocco. So this one here was was Morocco. Uh, this one wasn't. This was before. So this was. Have I got this right? I wouldn't have been. Oh, was it my twenty? How old was I in this photo? 20, finished uni, 22. I was 23, 24 in this photo. Oh, it's 15 years old-ish. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, about, about that. And yeah. it was uh, World Champs in Mundaka. And this was in Bakio. And, um, and Mark and I had just, just the best afternoon surfing Bakio. Mm. Um, and, I mean, you know, it was just the time of the sport where you... you these type of maneuvers were just starting to happen. And, and like, you know, it wasn't every way. Every now and again, you'd get lucky in the timing and the speed with all the line and you'd just pop out the top. And, and you sort of, you didn't really know back then. Was it an air? Was it not? I don't, don't really know. But <laughs> so, you know, um, yeah. later on, uh, a couple of days later, so I hit this maneuver. I wasn't really sure. I felt like, you know, good re-entry. I wasn't really sure if it was an air or not. Um, and uh, didn't want to claim it, you know. And uh, I, I said a party, it was my birthday. And this guy comes up to me and he says, uh, I've got a photo of you. I right. said, okay, I'm just some random guy on the beach, uh, or, or seemingly. Yeah. And uh, he showed me this photo. I said, oh, that's amazing. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it off you. That's brilliant. And he said, I said, no, you can't, you can't buy this off me. My rates are too high. <laughs> I take photos for, for Rip Girl, for Billabong, because of course, wow. when, the, when yeah. the pro circuit used to go through there from yeah. Wendaka, yeah. You know, it turns out that he was like this pro photographer. He said, no, you wouldn't be able to afford it. Um, and, and it's no good to me anyway, this photo, because it's a kayak. Um, but, you know, I love what you do out there. I'll give you the, fo- <laughs> I'll give you the photo on one condition. I was like, okay. He said, you just keep surfing. That's your condition. Keep surfing. Wow. I love watching you surfing. And, um, yeah, that was my birthday. So that was my birthday present. This guy, this random guy finds me, gives me this photo and just – you know, on the condition that I keep surfing, which, you know, that was an easy condition to keep. Because, yeah, uh, yeah. Obviously, I was going to keep doing that. Um, <laughs> deal. Yeah, so I took the deal and took the photo. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is that back down in Morocco. Um, yeah, I love the I, arrows, man. I mean, the arrows are something, that, you know, I was talking to my buddy John. He's like, you don't just, listen, you see Pablo, you see Nathan, you know, you see these guys. You know, the it's speed, it's speed, it's the steepness of the wave, and of course, they're professionals. Um, I mean, you need 
technically world-class waves or steep waves to practice those moves. I mean, you've been fortunate enough where you've been able to either be at your home break or travel um, to practice. I mean, do you go out there on a mission and say, you know? Well, um, I think when it, when it comes to airs, I always, a lot of people ask, oh, you know, how do you do an air? I said, don't, don't think about airs. Don't <laughs> yeah. try and get an air because well, you yeah. see, well, yeah. yeah, I think I think the problem with airs is when, when you try too hard to get an air, you forget about the rest of your surfing. So yeah. you see people who are great surfers and can do, you know, great cutbacks, great slashes, great off the lips, you know, and, and you, you watch them and you think, what are they trying to do? And you realize they're trying to get an air. And they then you get all of that fundamental stuff. Yeah. And so my advice to anyone is, no, don't try and get an air. It will happen. It's, you know, it's about time. It's about speed. It's about skill. But it's about luck. Um, and still, you know, to this day, it's very rare that I'll, I'll come out of a bottom turn and say to myself, I'm going to hit an air. And actually, the few times when I do say that to myself, I never hit the air. I always <laughs> crash. <laughs> quite, off, quite often, it's, you know, you're coming out the bottom. Oh, that lip, that lip looks tasty. I'm going to smash that. Um, and, you, and, and, it, and quite often, when you hit one of these nice clean airs, it feels it's so sort of clean and smooth. You don't realize you, you hit it until you later get in and, and see the photograph. Um, so that's a really nice feeling, but yeah, no, there are times when you're looking down and you go, yeah, I know that's an air, but, um, no, my advice to anyone is don't, don't try and get the air, enjoy your surfing, right. um, yeah. go for floaters, go for re-entries, you know, bounce off that lip and, and eventually the air will find you and, um, uh, yeah, and, and as will that, that luck. But that's Joey here on the foreground of this photo. <laughs> cool. Um, probably screaming at me it looks it looks like he's sort of looking at me you know in admiration or something it, that isn't happening definitely not whenever we were surfing we were all <laughs> winding each other up he would have been yeah. shouting abuse at me at that point um, oh all right nice as, a, as i'm surfing past him and it should uh, be <laughs> a lot of, lot of banter between us yeah it was it was always good good fun and good laugh and uh and the great the greatest thing with joey he, he as well as being you know an amazing friend and an amazing uh, influence in my life and um, one of the best influences i think he's had on me is keeping me humble you know and um and in your 20s you know you, your ego character you get carried away sometimes with your ego and um you know you'll you'll get a photo and you'll be flying and and joey would always kind of just um, have a way of like cutting me down, you know, like in the, at the right time just to keep my feet on the ground. And that, that I think is what a, a good friend does. You know, they, they challenge you as well as, as well as sort of promote you and as well as, um, uh, you know, get excited for you. They're also there just to keep you humble. And I think good friends do that. And, and, and yeah. this, this, this air for sure, you know, he's looking, it's not an air, but this, this hit, you know, for sure he's, he's, well, he's looking at that. And for sure, when we got off the beach, I would have said, did you, did you see that? And he would have said, no, no, I didn't see it. You know, he yeah. never, never acknowledged a maneuver, which, which, was, which was great because it, you know, kept me, kept me humble. Um, and during that trip, so, so during that um, Sri Lanka trip earlier, I bumped into this, this wave skier um, right at the end of my trip. And he said, you know, you should be riding a wave ski. And, um, oh. And I was insulted, actually. I said, well, no, I ride kayaks. What are you talking about? You know? Well, we might have a few um, comments here. I, there's a few uh, Long Island guys that might take offense to that. So they might be uh, ribbing you, busting chops, if you will, um, doing what Joey would probably do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. Rightly so. Rightly Good, so. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so 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 um, at the end of this Sri Lanka trip, this, I don't do this way to you guys. Get, get on the ski. And I said, no, oh, I don't know. But, I, but you're such a nice guy. I sort of thought, well, there's something in it. We, we exchanged numbers. Turns, turns yeah. out he was from the UK. And we met up a couple of times in the UK. And, and, I, and I had to go on a ski. Uh, Steve Chillis, he was called. And, and I really enjoyed it. Um, but it was really hard, really mm. hard. I found the transition from wave ski to, to so from circuit to, to ski really hard. And of course, I always had a great circuit in my car. So yeah. I'd be at the beach trying to surf a wave ski, getting nowhere. Um, and just I just get out of the water, you know, go up the beach, storm up the beach, you know, in, in a bad <laughs> mood because I couldn't because I couldn't do it, you know, didn't have the stability. And I'd get wow. my kayak, yeah. have a great session. Mm -hmm. And so surf wave ski could never really take off in my life because I always had you know the go-to default, which was which was surf yeah. kayaking. But yeah. in in Morocco, I'd smuggled this this wave ski down, and and um, and I think that was one of the last days of the trip, I, I, it was a smaller day and, 
and I, mm -hmm. and I got out there on the ski and I was, I was starting to find um, some success with the ski and I was starting to, starting to, to, to enjoy it. And, um, you know, but then for every, every good day, I was having sort of terrible days and, and the kayaks would sort of keep coming to the forefront. And I still love to ride a kayak, you know, so that's yeah, not a bad yeah. thing. And this is, this is interference. So Joey put together this, this video, which is, uh, which was, you know, brilliant. It still is. Yeah. Um, just uh, and I'm really sort of honoured to, to to be part of it, um, and uh, and yeah, it's lovely. And it's great to hear that it's still been sold. And it's great to hear that that you, Rich, have recently bought it and enjoy it. It's um, crazy. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I I don't want to say it changed my life. Uh, it sounds very dramatic, but <laughs> um, you know, people like Matthew and uh, I think it's Edu. These guys that are in their young in their early twenties. So basically, you know, if you were young, you know, in, in the 80s and the 90s, you watched surf videos, you know, um, before the Internet and all that stuff. And then here's the only surf kayak film I'd ever really heard of. And my wife hands it to me. And uh, I was like a kid again. And I could see what you guys were doing. I'm like, oh, my God, you can do that in a surf kayak and a kayak. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> like, I got to up my game. <laughs> I think uh, look, as long as you're enjoying it, it that, that's the most important thing, right? And, and, and yeah. this, this video was all about that. It was all about good friends being together, um, enjoying surfing, uh, having just having just a ridiculous time. And, uh, you know, Joey just there dedicated daily filming, um, you know, <laughs> endless footage. Of, uh, you know, I think there's as much like just stupid behavior in there as well as as well as surfing you know there's just 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 just, just messing around and wandering through markets and mm, and just, yeah. just 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 having like a really good time um which of course these days would be sort of filmed on your phone and uploaded to social media back yeah, then that yeah. didn't really exist so after morocco we'd um we started talking during the morocco trip and this is the problem every trip we were on we we're enjoying, but we we're all always dreaming of the next trip. And um, of course, Joey's a good, another good friend of mine who who, who I know through Joey, uh, Spencer Cook, um, and he, uh, yeah, he, he's also been quite influential in my in my surf kayaking. Um, and he had been on a trip with a guy called Drew a long, long time ago. East Coast guys use that. Uh, down to Ecuador to a place called Ayampe and it told us all about this this great wave. So we we went to Ecuador for for a month um, together, uh, Mark, Joey, and I, and we, we invited loads of people, loads of kayakers from um, from um, from Jersey. Wow. And um, crazy. And, and this was the only. This is an amazing trip. It was great to have all those surf kayakers together. But this is the only time that sort of rattled my. Um, I said earlier that you know I, I, I've always been quite happy to you know um, to, to to travel alone and, and to be in small groups and, and I think that the dynamics of, of a bigger group mean yeah. that there's you know, there's more people therefore there's there's more people to uh, to to get on or not get on and we didn't have any any issues with people not getting on but the, you know the, the, this more it's more complicated for that that the group dynamics yeah of course the logistics um, you know. We while we were in Ayampe, it was it was great. But when we wanted to move, we needed to rent two pickup trucks. Whereas yeah. you know when there was only two or three of you moving around, you know you could hitchhike or you could hop on a yeah. bus. But so so I think um, my advice to, to anybody out there listening who's sort of planning a trip is 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 initially keep it small. Yeah. Um, also, people don't really locals don't look that favorably on a big group um, of surfers turning out to a break. Uh, let alone surf kayakers, um, we're sort of a minority, um, and I feel like we're guests really in, in lineups. So, if you keep the numbers small and you keep the etiquette good, then yeah. generally you can surf most spots. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, the bigger the group, the, the more complicated it is. And actually, it worked quite well, it worked well, it was nice. Um, but yeah, it was just a little bit more, more to organize, a little bit more to, to sort yeah. out. Yeah. But the outcome was that that that, that added a, a, a lot more variety to, to the film. So the last section of, of Ecuador has oh, got a lot more different surfers, and we had sort of more more banter and and um, and, uh, and you know it was good. It was good to have a group that big. But uh, after <laughs> it, I, 
I did sort of conclude that, yeah, it was fun, but I, I wouldn't, you know, go through all those logistics again. I just keep it simple. Yeah. Um, low effort, big gains, I think, is, is, is the former I use to the, the surf trips. Um, and, uh, and here's Joey himself here. Look, back then, uh, we had changed. So I left my, my designs behind me. And wow. um, we, we took a move. We were, we, would, we were creating a lot of noise in, in surf kayaking. Um, and Rye, uh, Riot, not Ride, Riot, um, decided they wanted to go into surf kayaking. And, and, and they decided that, that, that we should be the guys to promote their surf kayaks. Yes. So they uh, sent these sent these kayaks down, um, and they were cool. I, I enjoyed them. They were they were a little bit narrower. They were designed. Yeah, they look they look curves. interesting. I, I mean, I'm sort of new to this, obviously, but I see yeah. the shapes, especially in the experimental stages. Um, you know, 2008. Yeah. You know, it's not that long ago, really, but it kind of is um, in surf kayak design for HP models, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And they, they, they work. They work really well. I mean, this is on the right-hand side there, getting popping a little air, and Joey's smashing the lip there. Yeah. And this is the thing, you know, Joey's always behind the camera. So no one really realized, or, or and still, you know, still to this day, he's a very, very good kayak. He's excellent. He's an excellent sir kayaker, excellent river kayaker. But of course, he's, he's always behind the camera making yeah. these films. Yeah. Um, he's very selfless in that way. But yeah, he, he rips. And um, we got some, managed to get some good footage of him and some photos of him during the, during that, that Ecuador trip. And uh, yeah. essentially, the the wave I up here that we'd been sent to was pretty much a closeout, you know. Yeah. And it was we were just taking bomb turns and just smashing the lip as hard as we could, mm -hmm. and um, you know, mostly landing, but sometimes getting some absolute kickings. Um, yeah. And, and of course, just just the the, the, the things we saw. You know, there's a hummingbird there on the top left hand side, and and the artwork there on the, the right hand side, just just beautiful. And yeah. South America, there I was starting to really sort of fall in love with. Um, uh, and it's two, 2009. This is so we'd we'd gone out in 2008 in, in uh, November December. We stayed together in as, as a big group. Um, in November, then uh, everyone everyone went back, and it was just me and my my partner at the time then, um, who who decided to stay, do an extra month in in Ecuador, moving around, traveling around, and then go down through Peru. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided that you know it was time to make that commitment to to to, to wave ski, um, yeah. and the only way I could do that would would be not to travel with a kayak. While I had a kayak, <laughs> I would always, at the point where it started getting difficult, I would always go back to the kayak. So I think yeah. take the kayak out of the equation and just let's let's figure out wave ski. Um, yeah. uh, and I start, you know, I mean for every series of good shots like this, there's there's there's, there's days where I just couldn't get out or I was just getting smashed and and it was wow. a hard, hard learning curve. And I think for any kayaker making the transition into to wave ski, um, it's difficult because it's a different, you know, it's a different pull on your, your stomach muscles. It's a different uh, geometry to your legs and your feet. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you're higher, you're higher up. So it, 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 it felt uh, very, very strange and awkward at first. And <laughs> gradually, gradually sort of got there. Um, and yeah, I mean, we were traveling through South America, riding buses, riding, <laughs> can cycle through major cities, um, washing it all down with beer along the way. Uh, here's me waiting for, for a bus there uh, with a couple of uh, couple of skis. Now, did you um, find like um, traveling with the ski was a little bit easier? Um, packing up and yeah, and yeah, yes and no. Like yes, I mean, um, it's it's lighter. Yeah. Um, but uh, more fragile, so I was always sort of concerned about it smashing. Yeah, um, yeah. And in fact, I, I broke the nose off, and I had about three months to go. So, but but I, I fixed it. Whereas a kayak, I wouldn't have smashed the nose off. You know, so they weren't as um, they're not as resilient. And I, that's the mistake a lot of kayakers make. You know, we we, we jump on a on a wave ski thinking it's going to be as tough as a as a, as a surf kayak. And of course, it's not. It's not supposed to be. So yeah. you've got to sort of. Um, Treat yeah. it with respect and treat it like you know, like a like a fragile, high performance piece of equipment uh, yeah. that it is. You know, you don't you don't see a, a rally car driver 
jumping into a Formula One car and, and you know bouncing the Formula One car off the curves and, and, and yeah. off the, yeah. the hay bales because it just falls apart. That doesn't mean it's you know it doesn't mean a Formula One car is weak. It's it's built for purpose, and that's the thing with a wave ski. And so you know you have a hard learning. I had a hard learning curve uh, with wave ski um, because of the stability uh, or lack yeah. of and also how fragile it was. The other thing is I couldn't put stuff inside the wave ski. So a surf kayak, you could always step your equipment in. Yeah. Um, so there you have this heavier object. Um, yeah. and you you know, you didn't have stuff to put in, but you're carrying that stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah. that worked out quite well. Uh, uh, and I think the reason I put these slides in to show, that's Ecuador, green as you like, lots of rain, super yeah. green. Yeah. That's Peru. That was my first, you know, uh, yeah. impressions of Peru. Brown. Yeah. Desert, yeah. and, and honestly, I almost just went back up to Ecuador. I thought, what are, you know, what am I doing here? This place is horrible, and 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 um, and, and it's not horrible. It's just very different, and, I, and yeah. I, I love that. I see that photo now. I think that's beautiful. Um, it's you know lunar landscapes. Uh, it's like surfing on the moon here. And it's just, you know where yeah. I've been for like twelve and a half years. It's just I'm just used to that now. It's just, it's magic in its own right. Um, and yeah, we were meeting characters all the way along the road who would just sort of help us out and take us from spot to spot. And, um, that I think is in answer to your earlier question where the wave ski is 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 is, um, is yeah. easy to, to travel with. You know, I was able to, to walk in you know yeah. distances to uh, to go to go wave ski, and I could just stick on the back, um, you know, clamber around those rocks and find secret spots. You know, um, yeah. The funny thing about Peru in the north there, they're still they still um, hunt for oil. So, you you know, in the background, you've got a beautiful um, point break, you know, in the foreground, they're, they're, they're drilling holes. And, and, and there's an oil rig out there. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, like, as, as you see, I started to find my feet on the, on the, on the wave ski. Um, yeah. Eventually made it down to this town called uh, Franchaco. And the other thing I've noticed, I noticed on that initial trip, and since I've lived in Peru, I've you know, I've noticed all the way along, really, that everyone uh, gives me such a warm reception, which is rare. I mean, you know, you, you, you normally paddle out into a lineup and uh, a lineup of really good, Locals. you know, yeah. really good ways of localism. But it's the complete opposite here. I've found that um, yeah. the reception has been fantastic. And it's, I, I believe it's because I'm just associated with these Cavitas de Tatora, which are these traditional reed boats. And if you look at the guy on the right hand side, you know, he's got a paddle in his hand, he's sat on what something that looks like a wave ski. So, you know, they just think it's funny. They just think it's someone returning back to the roots and, and serving it. So I get waves and, and they, you know, they, they, you know, they like it. They like to see it, uh, the wave ski being, being paddled around and surfed around. And, and I think it's because of Cavita de the Tora um, that, uh, that I've, I've, I've had such a great reception. Yeah, you know, it's you know, the modern know. design. Uh. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> And this is this is this is Chikama. This is a place that I now ah, the went, legend. Yeah, I now call home. And uh, so that's that section there is that the point all the way to a to a section called Al Ombre. And that's about looking at about a kilometer at that point. Yeah. Um, so uh, and I'm going up this weekend actually. I'm booked on a flight to go uh, tomorrow evening um, to serve uh, in that area. And there's a number of different point breaks that I'll be uh, hopefully scoring over the weekend um and look i mean it's just it just goes off it's just absolutely crazy so much oh, fun it's insane <laughs> beautiful you know beautiful sunsets um so yeah, yeah, I, I it's, can't... It's, it's absolutely amazing uh, yes yeah, you know, i don't it's, know it's it's, 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 it's those, those are kind of things that people like us dream of and um you know it's great that you're there i mean made your dream happen i guess you could say Definitely, definitely, and it's. Um, I just got lucky. The job popped up in the school. I think you, I applied uh, did you for mute it. yourself by accident? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, can you hear me? You hear me? Okay. No, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. great. Um, yeah, just just luck. Really, I saw this job after that after that that trip. Basically, that last trip in in Peru. I came back and uh, I'd done my four year sabbatical. I uh, went to the to the world champs. So I made the final, I came third um, and I was happy. I was like, you know, so from the wave scale, I went back into the kayak, could go to the world champs. 
um, in Portugal, in uh, Santa Cruz, and uh, made it through to the final, got third. So I said, well, that's it, you know, objective done. I made the final, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. Um, and then I, uh, th then I, I went back to full-time work, or tried to, and I, every day I would get in a car, and it was my first Welsh winter for four years, having been all around the world gallivanting and being in tropical places, and I, you know, I couldn't do it. I was going absolutely mad. Um, I was freezing, miserable. Um, mm. just, I just wasn't the good person to be around. You know, I was just, um, although I was loving teaching and loving my job, you know, I was just, you know, complaining. Oh, what am I doing here? This is what life's all about, you know. And, and I was just every night coming home and looking um, online uh, for a job. And eventually I find this job um, in 2010, um, and it was January. And I find this job and I, and I applied and they rang me up about two or three days after I'd sent the, the, the application in, which is really rare. And uh, they said, look, uh, we're, we're really stuck here. We need a DT teacher, uh, design teacher. Can you, can you be here in, um, in two weeks? Wow. I said, well, yes, of course I can. Because my mentality back then was just, just you know, going from trip to trip. So, <laughs> you know, and they were sort of taken aback by that. And they said, well, you know, your CV has got a lot of gaps in it. The last four years, you haven't really been working. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so they were taking a risk uh, bringing me out. And I said, yeah, but, you know, um, I've been pursuing my dream and, uh, and this, is, this is where I've got to. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm now ready to commit to a school and uh, give me the chance and, uh, uh, and, I, and I'll, 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 I'll show you I'm worth it. And, um, uh, and they might have believed that. They might have also just thought, we, you know, beggars can't be choosers. We need someone. He'll be here in two weeks. Um, let's just take him and, and, and roll the dice. And uh, I turned up, and and it was in my interest to make it work in the school. You know, it was I had all this great lifestyle uh, ahead of me, mm -hmm. uh, great waves and and great climate, and amazing culture. Um, so it was in my interest to be, you know, as professional, uh, hard working as I could to make it work. And um, that's that's what I've done for the last twelve and a half years, and just it's just a flavour of some of the, the experiences I've had along the way. Um, the other great thing about living in a country like Peru, where you've got you know amazing waves, is it attracts amazing athletes. Um, mm. And uh, Pablo Airways rang me uh, at some point, uh, must be five or six years ago, and he said, "Oh, you know, could I if I came out to Peru, could I?" Uh, would you would you share some spots? Would you show me around? I said, yeah, no, no, you know, come and stay with me, and we'll we'll go surf together. And um, we just became really really good friends. Um, and during that that trip, then we we started planning this this uh, this trip to drive from Lima all mm -hmm. the way down to Conception in um, in Chile. So that's what we did. We he, he came back a year later. Clement there in the uh, in the background of the photo, and uh, that's Loic, um, who was the cameraman, and uh, and um, and Pablo. And we loaded up the truck, we sit down there fully laden, and we just um, we went Peru to Chile, there and back uh, over two months. Um, the great thing about working in South America was all it is all of the uh, big holidays, the, the the summer holiday here. I get two and a half months off of school. So oh, I can just yeah. travel and surf and, and like yeah. that. <laughs> and, uh, and this was our life for two months, you know. We were the, 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 the boys were really, you know, they're millennials, you know, so they're really into their video editing and they were they would be filming, making lots of like quick short videos and uploading them on, on, on YouTube as we went down. Um, and I was sort of driver and and and, and chef really and um, yeah. And and we'd, we'd stop at these crazy places and just, you know, we, we didn't want to, we we're on a budget there as well. We didn't want to spend money on, on campsites. So we'd yeah. camp on the beach wherever we could or, or find a, you know, find a secluded spot where we could camp. We'd have a fire and cook on the fire. We had a bottle of gas there as well. So we'd, we'd camp out the back of the truck and then just, just sometimes put the tents up quite often to sleep in our board, in our board bags. Um, because you know, quite often we were on the move, we didn't need a tent, and and we just, you know, we just we just went day by day, traveling all the way down to Chile, and then surfing, and all the way back. And actually, there's a 
there's a good film that Pablo put together. Um, if you look on, on Pablo's Facebook, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll find it. Um, and it's got the, the, the whole adventure there and back is huge oh, amount cool. of footage. So that was, that was fun. And of course on that, on a trip like that, um, I was able to, you know, to learn from uh, a lot from Pablo who, mm. who, you know, graciously shared a lot of, a lot of his tricks on a wave ski and my wave ski riding got better. And I think just associating yourself with good riders and surfing with good riders, just, you know, it, it, it organically just happens. So you just surf in good waves with, with, you know, with excellent riders and you just naturally just, um, get better and better and evolve. Um, and then the guys in this photo, you've got Easy Kiel, who's, who's, who's a really good friend of mine from Argentina, Easy Kiel Martinez. Mm -hmm. um, he's on the, in the top left-hand side there. In the bottom right is uh, Fila Reyes from, uh, from Chile. And, uh, and Joey's actually in the, the top middle photo there. Joey came <laughs> out. Um, we were planning the World yeah. Championships, the Surf Kayaking World Championships. So Joey yeah. came down to see... You know, to check out the logistics and see if it was just some like crazy ridiculous dream of mine to to run the world champs or whether it was actually a viable option uh, to run a world champs in in uh in, in peru um so joe was there that year but every year in may uh easy keel comes up and, and philo comes up and they're both doing really good jobs in their their countries um to grow the sport so you've got easy easy growing it in uh, argentina You've got Philo growing it um, in Chile, and, and I've been doing my best to, to get um, the numbers up in Peru and help develop the sport in Peru. And we get together every May for a week, um, and we go, you know, we load the truck up, and we just drive up the coast, and we just we just surf. Um, yeah. And these are the type of breaks, you know, I'm talking about. I'm not going to tell you where this break is or what it's called, but you can see in the background, there's nobody on that way. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that. That way, that's one of my favorite spots in Peru, and I hope I'll surf that this weekend. Um, and it, you know, just you see the adobe bricks in the foreground there, and yeah, and it's just, yeah, it's a fishing village, there's nothing there, there's no Wi Fi, uh, you can't even get 4G. Uh, there's like one little corner in the town where you can just go and just check your messages, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. It's brilliant. You buy a buy a fish for about a dollar in the morning and um, cool. so you go down, surf, you have to surf at sort of 6, 6.30 before the wind gets there. On the way back, the fishermen are coming in because those, those reed boats, those cabiitos, the tetoras, um, they're, they're all there. Um, yeah, yeah they, they, there they are. They, those are working boats there. The fishermen go out in those boats, they fish, they will, the, the nets are out in the, in, in the ocean, so they go and yeah. they take the fish out of the nets, they come back, they go to the market, they sell it. So those it's yeah. not just that those are, are, are for are, leisure are really, and surfing. Yeah, it's, they're yeah. working. Yeah, it's brilliant. It, yeah, and it's not just history. They're actually yeah. there, current yeah. current time. Um, yeah, the waves look amazing. So yeah, we, I mean, this is this is just this Peru. It's just brilliant. I just you know, it's not always the most photogenic place because the the, the water has this sort of grey look to it, and that, that yeah. really comes from the overcast nature. The moment I'm coming out of summer, yeah. So here you go, you know. There's a there's a summer shot, same waves, same water. Um, actually, it's a different way, but you know the same yeah. ocean, the same water, but the yeah. sun's high in the sky. You can see it reflecting on my my paddles. Yeah. Um, and I see I'm, I'm not even in a wetsuit, so that was um, that was summer or the end of summer. And then um, this is uh, a, a really cool one of the few rights in in Peru. Um, and here, you know, it looks a lot grayer, a lot more miserable, and it's still nice yeah. and warm. I'm only in a, a thin wetsuit, but yeah. this sort of overcast, yeah. the, these neblina, they call it, the clouds come over and it makes everything gray and, and dull. And, um, yeah. But, you so know. If I want to take my wife, I guess the summer is the time to go. I think so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. That might be possible. So th this is one of my favorite photos on the, on the left-hand side because you've got kind of the new... Yeah. Passing the old there, you know, the, the, the new, the new, um, the new sport, the new iteration of, of, yeah. of uh, a Cabellito de Tetora, the wave ski and the, and the original Cabellito de Tetora. And they're about three years old. Um, yeah. yeah it's... Then, so it's a really cool place to sit. You know, you're around the history and the roots of your sport. Um, yeah, I love these photos. You're catching air quite a bit. And I'm guessing that... Uh, you were doing it in a surf kayak and then you'd finally transition into wave ski. And I mean, is this 
I don't want to say easier. It's different. Um, it, it, is it easier in a wave ski getting in the air? A, a wave ski is, you know, it, it's the next, not yeah. really the next iteration because wave skis came before high performance circuits, right? But for me and my personal journey, my personal development um, throughout, you know, in paddle surfing or sit down surfing, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah. It, it, wave skiing was the, the natural next progression. It's, yeah, yeah. It's it's a higher performance craft. It's it's quicker. It's lighter. Um, your yeah. seating position allows you to do a tighter, you know, a tighter turn out of the bottom. Uh, but the magic for me with a wave ski is that uh, whereas uh, kayaks are popping out of molds, so you're waiting for the kayak manufacturer to to make the next uh, development, the next kayak. With a wave ski, you know, you're surfing that wave ski thinking, how do I want to change it? How do I want to tweak this? And you can go to your shaper and just take, you know, uh, 10 mil out of, the, out of the width, or what is that, yeah. a quarter of an inch out of the width. You can, like, take it, take it, take an inch off the length. And you, you've got that ability to just evolve your craft underneath you as your, your surfing uh, is evolving. And um, I got quite lucky in Peru. Um, that uh, to stumble across this this shaper that's a, a Peruvian wave ski there, and this guy uh, Focus Luis Vasquez of Focus yeah. um, uh, swam up to me one day and said, "Look, you know, I want to start shaping these. Can we meet?" And uh, that was that was that's it. See what I mean? It's, it's all about good luck. Just, just I'm just you know benefited from from good good fortune really. And uh, I said, "Yeah, let's go for it." So together we've we've shaped. What, 30, 30 plus, over 30 wave skis. And uh, due to the, 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 the development of the Peruvian wave ski, we've managed to grow the sport um, to the point now um, that we, you know, we, we've got a bit of a Peruvian team going down here. We have every, before the pandemic, every year we had a Pacific uh, competition where Chile would come up to Peru or, or yeah. Peru, we would go down to Chile and, and Argentina would fly across and we'd have this kind of uh, inter- a competition between um, Peru, Chile, and Argentina, and of course, also every year we were having the South American uh, Championships. Um, that's us yeah. on the bottom left hand side. That's our, uh, Alfredo, who's a real influential character in the sport. He's helped it grow um, and promoted it. And, and Sebastian uh, Legaspi there also in those photos. And the three of us um, went down to Chile just before the pandemic. That one. Um, and on the bottom, oh, that's the bottom left is the, in Chile is the, the, the South American champs. And on the bottom right hand side, that was us in Pantene in, um, in Spain. That was the last wave ski world champs which happened um, because we were due then, we put a bid in to, to, to run the world champs, the wave ski world champs in, in Peru. And, and of course that never happened because of the, the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but what did happen is we ran the surf kayaking world champs. Um, and so we received uh, surf kayak is from you know all over the world, yeah. And we were able to, for me, it was you know a great honor to be able to, 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 to share and privilege really to share all of these great waves and great experiences with the, the world surf kayak community. And, um, and uh, yeah, it was it was it was amazing. You know, the, the town I used to in Huanchaca, this little town, sleepy town that I would walk through with my wave ski under my arm. Um, uh, and walk past so many different people uh, as this like lone wave ski rider, because uh, my friends here are all board riders or, or were back then. To, to now suddenly have you know a hundred surf kayakers walking through their town, it was <laughs> it was just surreal. It was absolutely crazy. So that was great. That's so cool. I, I did put up your website uh, understatedworld.com on the screen, um, only because we're sort of at that point. I think in your uh, your story here that uh, you like a, a few other people. You actually, Ian uh, McLeod had, had, had mentioned your name that uh, you were making some interesting high performance boards down there in Peru. So some guy swims up to you, hmm. and then, uh, you know, by chance, this is the that, guy. Yeah. That was it, you know, and yeah. that's that's what happened. And, and this this so. is the guy here, Luis Vasquez. He is um, a well known shaper um, in in Peru. He's uh, He's a very uh, sort of an alternative shaper. He, he shapes guns. He shapes high-performance boards. 
but he also likes twin, you know, um, mm. twin pin boards um, and alternative crafts. And you know, he he'd seen seen wave skis. Uh, some Brazilians had come through in the '90s and had seen them, and, and, and always sort of wanted to make a wave ski. And yeah. just just started chatting to me in the water, thinking I was you know just a, tra a, a tourist passing through. But, yeah. but when I said no, I, I live here, and you know, I really need a shaper here. It'd be really good to start working together. Um, because before yeah. that, I was relying on going back to to the UK yeah. um, to get a new ski and bring bring back, yeah. which of course is, yeah. is frightening. Because every time I surf a thing, I think, well, if I snap this in half, I don't have a wave ski. So yeah. it was important to to me personally to, to have a shaper here and set up um, manufacturing yeah. a ski so that I've got access myself. But also, you know, the sport was starting to grow. We were, I was having people stop me and ask me where they could buy this wave ski and yeah you know i was happy to say well would, would you can't or, or, or I'll share, <laughs> yeah. you know i share links with them with with you know all the all the top wave ski brands in the world and they'd, they'd say well yeah. you know by the time we get a wave ski it's going to cost us so much and, and, yeah. and so i've seen the sport itself needed it and of course you can't have a wave ski without accessories and and i'm you know i, I teach design which means basically i i facilitate young people um, through their journey of, 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 of design and the design and realization of their designs. And I watched them all sort of realize uh, their mini dreams um, yeah. and create their products from their initial ideas. And I, I was thinking, you know, I need my own project. I need to um, fulfill my own kind of um, dreams and, uh, and my own passion to, to, to have my own, you know, project to, to make accessories. And I, I love working with textiles and um, I, know, I know a lot about um, um, uh, uh, injection molding and, yeah, and, yeah. and a lot of a lot of the things I teach actually. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, could could come together and sort of amalgamated together to, to, to enable me to set up understated and um, and it's you know it's, it's worked well with focus because Luis then can shape the skis and I I work with him and, and help him. Um, we basically what happens is, is every new ski that, that I design for myself, Louise keeps that design and then we just tweak it. We, you know, we, we, he'll ring me up and say, look, I've got an order for, from, from, from this person. I'll know who they are. I'll know how they surf. I'll know their weight and their ability. And yeah. I'll then act as the consultant uh, for Louise and tell him, okay, make it this wide, uh, make it a bit longer, a bit more, a bit more meat on the, on the rails for this person or a little bit, a little bit more volume throughout. And yeah. then Louise then, has got the expertise to shape these these beautiful beautiful wave skis and uh, so yeah we've been it was a it was a lucky um, lucky meet really it was it was great that we we, we met each other and uh, it's been brilliant working with him and, and developing the skis together um, and that's but of course <laughs> sorry sorry that's your view <laughs> is, is that where you live right now that so no this here is. This was my pandemic experience. Oh, so um, yeah. my first, so Peru had a heavy lockdown. You know, uh, uh, schools were online for two mm. uh, two years, which was which was difficult for the school community. It was difficult yeah. for kids, and uh, and it's difficult for everyone. But I think the pandemic has taught us all about you know what it's taught us. You know, a lot of people have had a, a lot of loss, and I'm really sorry to anybody who's who's listening in, who, who's, who's lost a family member. I can't imagine what that must be like. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. Um, it's been really hard and we've all had our, our, our struggles. Personally, you know, it's been, it's been a challenge as well. Um, but also I think the pandemic's taught us to sort of try and make the most of a, of a, of a bad situation. And uh, Peru was a place where I could do just that. And, and the teaching online, while it wasn't, and running a school online wasn't ideal, it did give me the flexibility. Um, so I went north. I didn't stay in Lima. Um, and for seven months, I, I lived in Panchaco. I worked online. And um, as long as I had a white background behind me and, and a shirt and tie on, I'd be in board shorts, sometimes in my wetsuit. Um, yeah. And as long as I, uh, I had the you know, top half of my body looking smart, yeah. and clean shaven, then I could get away with it, you know, and my, my, yeah. my managers knew that, that what I was doing and they said, look, as long as you've got good Wi-Fi and as long as you're there when you need to be and as long as you, you know, you're looking smart, then, then go yeah. for it. And so, yeah, I found myself teaching lessons and, 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 and having meetings and, and leadership uh, meetings um, on my laptop there. 
Um, you know, meanwhile, watching Chikama, that's Chikama there in the distance. And then, you know, uh, lunchtime would hit and I'd, I'd run out, get some waves, and then they'd come back in and keep working. And uh, I was able to have sort of seven months up in the north um, yeah. just getting amazing waves. And Yeah, the, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> as, and for the, this, this, this photo, this was my birthday. So this the, for the, you know, my dream for the whole time I've been in Peru has been to surf on my birthday. But of course, you know, either my my birthday falls on a weekend, surf yeah. Chikama specifically on my birthday. That's been the dream. I always surf on my birthday, but, but specifically I had to surf Chikama on my birthday. Yeah. And this is my 38th birthday. Um, yeah, that's right. My 38th birthday, I was in Chikama and uh, it was Monday. So of course, normally I'd be back in Lima in school, but of course I was online. So, yeah. so the, the flexibility of that working online allowed me to, to, to this is about uh, six o'clock AM, just having my, my coffee before I, I went out and got some, some amazing waves. So it was brilliant. Yeah. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's it. I mean, that's, that's my journey. And uh, I've shared a bit of a flavor of, of, of my experience in, in the presentation. I've got some photos there, but, uh, uh, my Instagram, I'm, I'm sort of using Facebook less and less now. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'm more, um, I'm more in favour of Instagram. It's just cleaner and neater and a bit easier. Um, so please, please uh, add me to your Instagram or, or add me as uh, Facebook if you're still only using Facebook, um, because most of what I upload to Instagram, I, I, I double up on Facebook. Um, and there's this, this, you know, I, I like to post and I like to read the comments and. Uh, and uh, if people like watching the material as well, then that's, that's brilliant. Um, but ultimately, I think um, if I want to get a message across in this, 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 this session today, I think it's just that, um, you know, I've just, just taken the advantage of opportunities and, and tried to create opportunities myself throughout, throughout my life. And I haven't always got it right. Um, and I haven't always planned well uh, quite often, I've literally just bought a ticket, had a vague idea about where I was going, and just <laughs> just just turned up there. Um, yeah. And I think don't let sort of a lack of a plan put you off. Just do it. Just 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 buy a ticket, jump on a plane, take your wave ski or take your surf kayak or whatever it is you're riding, and get out there. Um, and, and and you'll have an amazing experience, and you'll surf some great waves. You'll meet some amazing people. You'll make the best friends of your life um and you'll you'll you know you'll, you'll experience some awesome cultures as well and uh so yeah i think that the message I, uh, if, if there is one to give is just just get out there and enjoy it guys like the world is is just an amazing place full of amazing waves um and i, I definitely recommend peru to be very high up on your list as uh, places to go and travel uh peru yeah speaking of uh speaking of peru uh... <laughs> Chikama, like we see on, on the screen right now, um, is just, uh, you know, just a thing of beauty. I don't even know what to say to it. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen Laird Hamilton out there. I, I've seen so many surfers out there and uh, just put it on the screen for people to see. It's, uh, man, I, I think, um, you know, for me, uh, getting a wave ski in my arsenal uh, it's something I like to do. I'm a stand-up board surfer since I was uh, a little kid. So uh, I'm used to it being loose, you know, short boards, I, you know, the pros and cons. And uh, and maybe just to be able to travel with something a little lighter. Um, and using the warmer weather, too, and in certain wave heights. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking to get into it as well. And uh, any advice? I, I know you said it's um, it's a little bit of a learning curve. Uh, you know, the stability, you can't just sit there inside your kayak waiting on a wave, right? I mean, you've got <laughs> a lot of core. You're not pushing your back against the backrest and your feet against the blocks, right? It's It seems like a whole nother beast. Practice. You yeah, just, practice. Don't give up. My advice is, is practice. Don't give up. So many times I almost walked away from wave skiing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I don't want to be the guy in the in the presentation today saying, you know, um, don't do don't do surf kayak and wave skis way better. Both have their merit. 
I've had amazing time surf kayaking and I've had amazing time wave skiing. Um, but for anyone who's, who's looking to make that transition uh, between kayak, uh, from a kayak to a wave ski, um, don't go too small. Don't, um, don't let your ego choose your wave ski. Let your shaper tell you what you should ride. You know, these shapers you've mentioned, Ian in, in, in Max Ski, you also got Ant with Max Ski, you got the guys um like Solomanzi. With, uh, with Solomanzi, exactly yeah. uh gem ski gem was out here a couple of a couple of weeks ago yeah, yeah um right. i think am i missing anyone out there's island ski there's, there's so many amazing I manufacturers of, yeah, yeah exactly exactly there's so many amazing manufacturers of, of skis out there ks of course okay um, yeah. and they those guys know what they're doing those shapers really understand how a wave ski works yeah. and um the work, my biggest mistake as a, as a surf kayak was I, you know, I turned up going, well, I can, I can hit airs, I can hit these maneuvers in a surf kayak. I want a high performance wave ski. And um, unfortunately, the, the, the first shaper I found was very agreeable. And he said, okay, then a high performance wave ski you will have. And looking back, my initial struggles were because I had a very small wave yeah. ski. And actually, um, my advice is listen to the shaper, let them dictate to you. Um, the 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 the, uh, the shape, the size, the width, the volume distribution. Um, do your time on a big ski, get used to it, and then gradually, incrementally, go smaller and smaller and smaller. But you know, as you just said, Richie, you've come. You know, you're a, you're a surfboarder. You're a, you you come from that background. And what you didn't do on your first day on a surfboard was jump on a tiny <laughs> little toothpick uh, surfboard. You. You, you yeah. started with your, 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 your fun boards, your mini yeah. and you gradually worked down and you sort of, you, you basically uh, earned your stripes uh, to the point where you were able to make that transition to a smaller one. And, and, if, and if, you know, if we can all listen, uh, you know, reflection is something I've learned throughout my whole journey is, is you know, listen to the people around you and, and question yourself and, and, um, and sort of uh, try and reflect on your own performance and, and why things are going wrong and, and rather than just getting frustrated. Um, I think that's, that reflection is a really good, uh, important tool in our, in our sport, but also listening, asking for advice and listening and, and, and not having a sort of preconceived idea in your head that I'm going to go and ride a wave ski, I'm going to rip on a wave ski, I'm going to get a really <laughs> small wave ski and I'm going to be awesome. No, no, don't think like that. Go to the shaper, be humble and say, I'm new to this. I need a I need a wave ski. This is my, you know, this is my ability as I see it. Over to you, and just let the shaper do the job because they yeah. know. They know. I, I agree. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There's no reason for us to reinvent the wheel, and it's not what we do for a living either. You, you know, um, that's that's something I, I put into. You guys have uh, done the hard work already, or the shapers anyway. You know, I mean. Um, so yeah, I'm looking to, to, to do something. I, I talked to Ian and, you know, on the East coast USA here, um, like, like Peru, you know, it's tough getting your hands on surf kayaks and wave skis. I got to order them straight from England and have them sent here or the Savannah canoe and kayak, which, you know, um, imports Hobson's and Ian's now here on the uh, East coast in, in Florida, mm -hmm. about 16 hour, 18 hour drive from me. So either way, uh, <laughs> It's, it's a little bit of an ordeal. And we had some comments actually earlier from um, this guy named Dennis, who's out here on um, Long Island, and he's looking for a, a wave ski. And uh, we've got a crew of probably 10 surf kayakers out here, and uh, they've helped me a lot. And they're kind of the ambassadors for surf kayak and wave ski. And they were, I think two of them visited Ian in Florida um, last month and talked to him and Savannah canoe and kayak isn't far away. So Chris Hobson stuff is down there. So, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. You talk about, uh, you know, the, the camaraderie and, and, uh, you know, it's kind of like a niche sport, unlike board surfing where there's like a million of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we're really good about sharing information. And like you said, go to the shapers, go to Chris Hobson. If you want to surf kayak or mega, whoever, um, or you and say, I'm looking for this type of wave ski. This is my, how much I weigh. These are what my waves are like. And, uh, I'm brand spanking new, or I want to, you know, 
you know, something that carves a little bit that's got some stability and, and etc yeah, and not grab a little toothpick uh when you first start <laughs> exactly and the same thing goes for the surf kites there you, you've mentioned hobson and mega there's ride there's murky yeah. waters um i mean every one of those companies make super high performance surf kites and they also make entry level and intermediate surf kites and it's you know, it's about picking the one that's right for you. So it's about picking up the phone or sending an email and, and, and speaking to the, the, you know, either the manufacturer or the shaper and asking them what's good for you. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is, you know, like don't complicate yourselves. If you're, you know, if you're in, if you're in the UK, look for the UK shaper. Build yeah, a yeah. relationship with the UK shaper. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, if you're in the States, look for the, the, the shaper in the States and, 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 and basically, you can, once you've got your first ski, you can go back to the shaper, either with the ski, usually not, because the shaper will remember the ski, he or she is a shape for you. And, you know, you'll just show them a video or a photo of where you're at, and they'll be here and have a conversation. They'll be able to say, okay, Richard, we made this few last time. Um, let's make a couple of iterations. And that, you know, that relationship between you and the shaper means that you're getting the next iteration of the ski that's developing yeah. with you as you develop so i think that's 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 really good and, and you can you can of course achieve that with a, a shaper from another country um i'm not saying don't do that but there are big advantages of having a shaper uh, yeah just down the road you know i totally agree i mean like we were talking with uh, i mean alessandro and ian and, and even you it's like exactly what you just said you know i'm i'm on the east coast usa as in uh, a bunch of guys that are on here now um, so we're, we're kind of with uh, either Ian or, or whoever can get us our equipment and we can go back to them as well. Um, it might be three, four, six months uh, with what's going on in the world today and supply chain issues and such. So, um, but it's good. You can link into a trip, right? You could, you could just say, okay, right. So I need a, I need a way. <laughs> yeah, you said that Ian's down in Florida. That's what, 15 hours. So go on a road trip, go down there, yeah, get, get a ski and, uh, and come back. I just see there's a comment there from 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 John is asking, is it true that people take a taxi back to take off in Chikama? Yeah, like when I first got here 12 years ago, um, there were tuk-tuks, you know, the little three-wheeler motor taxis with like sort of a, a seat in the back and a motorbike yeah. at the front. And they were running, they were driving up and down the, the beach. So you'd, you'd get down, you'd get out, and you'd you'd jump on the back of this 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 three-wheeler and they would drive you up to the point. Um, <laughs> now it's just great. I mean, I always, I always walk. I always, you know, I like the fitness link to it. You, yeah. you know, you, you'll do, you'll surf a kilometer. Yeah. And sometimes two kilometers. And you'll get out and you'll walk all the way back up. And it's good to think, reflect on the surf you've had, yeah. the wave you've had, and that, that helps your development. But also, it's just, you know, it's good to balance your body out, right? Because your upper body's working all the time. And to, yeah. to you know, as you walk in, it balances your legs out and, and, and your back and stuff. And yeah, you, you know, in two hours you'll have four or five long, long rides, and then uh, and long, long walks. So yes, yeah. John, it is true. There, 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 there were taxis now, rather than taxis in the on the beach. They actually have um, boats. They have a lot of boats in the water, and yeah. uh, you can pay and jump on a boat, and they'll take you back up to the point. There's a yeah. massive industry now in in uh, Chikama, um, to and one of the, you know one of the things about the pandemic was that international traveling wasn't happening so uh all of the breaks up there while i was up there for the seven months working um i wasn't just in close proximity of all these uh breaks i was also able to surf them pretty much you know to myself and a few other locals because there were just no no travelers coming through yeah how, how many i mean how many um surfers are in the water usually on like a, a normal day with a good swell like 50 you think 100 or less well, you could you could have um no, a hundred uh, and more um, yeah. in Chikama, but uh, it's got a current running through it on the point. So it's not a place, you know, you say a hundred, 150, you think, oh, no way would I want to surf that because you picture in a hundred, 150 people like, you know, together in a really tight, tight pack. Yeah. It's not the case in Chikama. It it's washes everybody down. So, you know, you, you, even if they get the boat, they jump in uh, into effectively like a river and, um, you know, it's, it's flowing that that strong, so you can't really paddle against it on the board. You just you, you either have walked around and upstream of that current, 
paddle out and float down with it, or you've jumped off the boat, but literally a set comes, you go for a wave, and you've either got the wave and you, you're on, um, or you've missed it and it's washed you down. Um, but also, you know, you don't always link up a, a kilometer or two kilometer ride. Yeah, yeah. Quite often you'll, you know, you'll fall off and you'll just yeah. down from the point there's not as much current. So you'll just sit and you'll wait for a wave that someone else falls off. So you'll see right. people just scattered all the way down the, 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 the beach. Yeah. And so there's never more than sort of three or four people together in a pack, even yeah. if there's a hundred people in the water. Um, so it's a place which can really hold a lot of people. Um, I like to surf first thing in the morning. It, that pays off if you, if you, you yeah. get in at 6, 6.30, you'll, you'll get a couple of hours before people turn up. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is, because it's like this world phenomena, you know, everyone yeah. who turns up and gets a couple of waves at Chikama, as you can imagine, just absolutely stoked. They're so happy. So there's no <laughs> animosity in the water. Like, never. Because <laughs> everyone's just so happy. And everyone just walks <gasps> into the town. Like, yeah, hey, how's it going? Cool. Like, throw the shaka. Like, everyone's having a great time. And they go, oh, you're that guy on that, that, that wave ski thing. Oh, you're that guy on that stand-up. Oh, you're that guy on that twinny. You know, everyone's stoked for themselves, but also stoked for everybody else, you know. And, um, and you know, the whole town is winning when there's a swell because, you know, the photographers there in the town are making money. The boat guys are making money. Yeah. Uh, the surfers are getting waves. So, so the vibe is just amazing rather than it being this hostile uh, yeah. localized place it's just cool. everyone's welcome and, and, and everyone's having a great time yeah oh that's so nice yeah i uh yeah i mean i i've been into this a couple of years now i think and uh came from a sit on top a uh, cobra strike and uh and worked my way into a mega a cyclone and my buddy john gave me a whitewater boat to learn how to roll i never did it uh, i think it was a year ago almost to the day uh in, in april uh, so the water is, um, you know, 45 degrees um, Fahrenheit. So it's like, what, five or seven or eight Celsius, I guess. But uh, so rolling has been a challenge uh, a little bit here and there. And uh, I know the skis might be a little harder to roll, um, to learn. So, you know, like you said, just keep practicing. <laughs> it's no easy way through. You just go, yeah. practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Uh, time, it's all about water time. You know, and uh, yeah. and perseverance. Just just keep persevering because it yeah. pays off. Yeah. Well, listen. I don't want to keep you too long. I mean, you know, eventually these interviews, I'm going to run out of things to ask people. But uh, you came in with a totally great, you know, presentation on uh, great old photos of old kayaks and you, and uh, that was something special. You know, and uh, and I really thank you for that. Um, and uh, like John says, it's all about the quiver. So, you know, even you, I'm sure you have not just one wave ski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've, got, I've got too many, too many. I've got, uh, I think, five wave skis at the moment, and they're all slight modifications, uh, ranging from 56 uh, centimeters. I've got 160, 50, 56 centimeters wide, 157. I've got one which is 58. Um, I left that in Portugal actually. I was over there um, in January, February, um, and a couple of other sort of variations. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's that's a great thing about wave skis, you know. It's just, just you just accumulate <laughs> them, and uh, you, you can attach to them. Uh, so keep hold of them. Yeah, and you have the quiver exactly. And, and a place like Peru, where the surf's so good, you know, you can just just go and play in, in different skis on, and stuff. So yeah, it's good. It's super fun. But um, no, thanks to you, Rich. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's easy for me just to turn up here and, and talk and share stories. Um, but you're the, you're the guy behind this. You've set up the, the platform. You, you, you've Thank you. promoted yeah. it and, uh, and pushed it. And, and our sport is just better off for, for selfless people like yourself. Um, you know, much like Joey back in the day when, when he, before social media, just took it upon himself just to promote the sport. You know, he just felt... You know, this was a sport he loved, and he he felt there were people out there doing things that should be filmed and and, and put out there on a, on a DVD, and that, that was his his um, his his drive. It wasn't right. I can make money out of this. It was you know the money that you pay for that that DVD it is probably still hasn't paid him back for his exactly. initial cost. You know. Yeah, I know. It's that's the way it goes. Uh, you kind of suffer for your art, if you will. Yeah. I mean, 
we use that term starving artist here. Um, and that's kind of it, whether you're a musician or artist or videographer or even surf kayak or a wave ski, you know, most of us have day jobs. Um, even the pros, unless you're Kelly Slater, or John Florence or Philippe yeah. Toledo, yeah, you know, yeah. and you're making those, you're making those finals and those numbers, um, you know, for the rest of us, it's, we suffer for our art and, and you do too, you, you know, um, for your passion so so thank you yeah listen are you going to be at the uh the world champion wave skis in ventura i think it's november right i, I mean i hope so i'm so happy <laughs> that um that we, we we we're running one you know it was it was, yeah. it was frustrating you know we, we, we were due to run it and we had to pause it here and we yeah. paused it again and we paused it then you know eventually we just had to accept that you know Damn. peru's just not in a place yet where you can you can receive um, international travel. Yeah. I hope. I hope in the future we can do it, um, and I hope that um, you know, if not now, then you know, five years, ten years down the line, we can do it. I think it's a great venue, and uh, Jem Howe of Jemski has just been through here, and he's just said, mm -hmm. "This is just amazing. It's just uh, it's blown his mind." Um, and so I think those who've come here and served Peru understand the magic of it and, and, and understand why I so, you know, desperately want to run a world champs here. Um, but I'm, you know, uh, so happy and excited that we can run a champs, you know, because, and I think for, for a while it's going to be in, in places like the States and perhaps Australia, perhaps in Europe, uh, when you, where you've got that safety buffer of, yeah. um, you know, of, of good, yeah, infrastructure, you know, developing countries, they're amazing, you know, it's, it's amazing places to explore, um, but you haven't quite got that safety cushion if something goes wrong the same way you have it in a developed country. So um, brilliant that we can run it in, in uh, Ventura, and I hope to be there. I hope to get some, some waves with everyone and, and see the community again, because it's, you know, it's, it's a small community, like you said, and we all help each other and we all know each other, um, and we all miss each other, and we've all missed each other a lot over the pandemic yeah. and uh yeah i look forward to catching up with some really good friends there as well yeah i i'm toying with going um my wife said well i, I guess you're going now and uh, which means we're going she's going if if i go so yeah. i'm married so <laughs> but it's great you know i love southern california and uh but yeah anybody out there who's listening uh, i mean one of the benefits of instagram um is where you can you can find nathan and kayaksurf.net and, and everyone instagram is kind of popping right now and uh, you know some of us are on the older side and like why do i need another social media platform uh, <laughs> well that's pretty much where you guys are posting your products and photos and videos and you don't have to send a friend request to follow nathan you just follow him uh or you follow a hashtag called wave ski or surf kayak and it's all in my feed every day i'm like addicted to it so uh <laughs> i'll make sure i keep uh pushing that to our our crowd on here on facebook you know so um yeah anything else you want to say i mean understated it looks like a great brand man great designs and colors and shapes and uh it's just really hot man. i i, I love the look and and what you got going on there <clears throat> yeah, thanks. I mean, like, you know, the, the, the understated influence in, in Focus, Focus is the wave ski brand um, and uh, understated's role there we, is a consultant, basically. I work as a okay. consultant helping him develop it. The, the accessories are, are understated. That's what we've, we've developed. Okay, Focus. Um, gotcha. um, but uh, yeah, thanks. I mean, it was, it was a necessary... Um, it was a lot of hard work, but it was necessary because the you know South America needed it. Yeah. Um, we needed our own wave ski manufacturer. We needed our uh, um, our own uh, accessories um, manufacturer. So you know I took on the accessories and, and Focus took on the wave skis. Uh, I should say actually we, we've talked about the, the sort of the, the, the big, uh, arguably bigger world brands. Uh, I've totally, I apologize to all the all, any Brazilians listening. I've totally uh, overlooked all of them. I mean, there's this Blast uh, wave skis, there's X ski, mm. uh, there's also Rojero Cruz, who 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 manufactures wave skis called uh, uh, what do they call Impact Wave Skis. Um, 
And the, you know, these are really good products in Brazil. So, you know, Focus wasn't the first wave ski manufacturer in, in South America. Mm -hmm. You know, we are way behind the Brazilians, but, but Brazilians are, Brazil's so big, it's got their own culture, their own <laughs> wave ski culture, and it's, that's been going for years. Yeah. Um, it's just sort of, um, it's just Chile, Argentina, and, and, and Peru who are on this big catch up at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So understated and, uh, and, and focus. Uh, have, have enabled Chile, Argentina, and um, and Peru to sort of develop and grow its grassroots. But yeah. um, no, don't forget that about those Brazilian guys because they're really good wave skiers as well. New Impact, that's the name of Rojero Cruz's his wave ski. Uh, and they're really well-made skis over there. So if you make it through to Brazil, look those guys up as well. Um, but uh, yeah, if you make it through to to Peru, um, come find me. And, and if will. you can't find me, you know, anyone listening, just, you know, write me a message and I'll, I'll share all the knowledge I've got with you and make sure that you have a great experience because um, it's important to me. You know, I've had 12 and a half years of, uh, of amazing <laughs> waves and time here. And, and I like to share, you know, I see yeah. seeing Jen through here the other week, having a great time in in what I consider to be, you know, my country, I consider myself to be, you know, Peruvian now. Um, it's it makes me very happy to see somebody come through. So uh, hopefully, Richie uh, will meet at, at the Worlds. But uh, yeah, yeah, if not, cool. definitely in in Peru, I'll, I'll receive you with open arms and yes, uh, we'll go for cool. soon. Good. Well, listen, I'm gonna let you go. Don't sign off yet. You and I will chat after we uh, end the broadcast. But uh, I just want to thank everyone for viewing and. We're in an odd time slot always because um, talking to you in South America, we had Paul in uh, the Netherlands. We had Desi in Ireland. We got guys on the West Coast, and it's only like 4 o'clock over there, but it's 2 a.m. in Netherlands. So we get a lot of people uh, watching on the replay. So um, this video will live out there on, on our page on the East Coast uh, USA Surf Kayak and Wave Ski page forever. Uh, so people can watch this uh, on the playback. So I want to thank all you guys and, uh, you know, um, doing great things, Nathan, and, and thank you. So uh, we'll talk to all you guys out there real soon. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening.